everybody. Thank you for being here with me today. Uh, we're going to start off with introductions. Vera? Yes, thank you for having me. So my name is uh, Vera Dietmann. I'm the founder and creative director of uh, XO Atelier here in Dubai. And uh, we are a multidisciplinary design studio and we do um, residential and commercial and hospitality projects. I'm Karina, design director of Swiss Bureau. We also disciplinary multidisciplinary uh, studio, residential, commercial, and uh, hospitality projects. I'm Stefano, and I'm CEO of the Atelier Oikos, and we produce and sell and install door, uh, the luxury door, and uh, in GCC country. So we manage uh, all the GCC country from here. Absolutely agree. Thank you so much. So I know we are gonna. We had a little bit of conversations prior to you know starting this off, but. Officially, when we talk about residential luxury, Dubai has now become sort of like this hotspot. I would say UAE in general. So we're going to start off with you, Vera. Yes. What are some of the elements that you could say defines luxurious residential projects? I mean, first of all, I think, uh, in my opinion, um, for us specifically, our residential project on the understanding of luxury is quite different. So we have... Um, mostly local clients, so second generation, and for them luxury defines themselves over um, functionality and minimalism. So that's not anymore, and I think that's very contra, contra the um, global opinion of the Emirati style. Because when we go, or when I go to a fair, and sometimes even here, when international companies exhibit here, and they think that's the local market taste, it's all very goldish and very shiny and polished and high glossy, like LL, LL surfaces. And, uh, and then when you see um, um, the projects we do with our locals, it's all very much, it's polished concrete, it's uh, maybe a nice uh, wood veneer with a nice uh, uh, face and, and texture. And and then it's uh, different surfaces which are more um, living in a kind of richness which is more subtle mm -hmm. rather than so boom in your face. <laughs> and I think that's, that's, what, that's what they define for. But I think it's changed a lot. And it also, because we are pretty minimalistic and not opulent architects, uh, as you maybe know, so that also attracts different clientele. So, yeah. and I think there's a big difference between our commercial projects and our residentials. Yeah. So um, they're very, they're not aligned so much. I think that's a big problem. That's very interesting. And Karina, do you think in terms of the similar aspect of it, or do you see the trends maybe changing for 2024? No, I agree. I think that uh, our clients are also uh, much more, uh, let's say, up to date in regarding design. We don't want to uh, pretend a style that from another age anymore, right? And my clients especially, they care about quality. This is one very important thing that defines luxury. is the quality and the finishing, is the, the, are the details, you know, um, and some technology within as well. Uh, they are all, all the time uh, requiring um, a technology seamless, nothing popping in your face, but that they can make their life easier in the, in the luxurious uh, home. So I think that these two elements, yeah. Perfect. And um, Stefano, I know it's from the product side of things. Yeah. Do you face similar queries from consumers? Yeah, normally. My, our customer, so we work more with architect and, and, and designer in residential villa. So uh, we follow the specification which the actual firm give to us in terms of. But yeah, uh, in the last year uh, they increased the size of the door, for example. They changed the material, so now we use more marble, real marble, or some specific tiles and wood the veneer inside. Okay. And we apply some technology new to match the home automation and everything. So this is more or less less goldish, let's say, than some years ago, and less uh, shiny. I mean, yeah, exactly. And do you see that something? And this one is for the whole panel, so feel free to jump in. Yeah. But is that something you see across the MENA GCC region, or is it more? in this particular country? No, I, I think it's not only in this region, but of course this region is very known in the past for more this kind of in-your-face luxury. And now it's a very subtle. 
it's more focusing on manufacturing but this is not only in this region i think this is a global phenomenon mm -hmm. and we also see it i think overall and overlapping also other industries because even the fashion industry is, is going more and more into the brands who have a, a big heritage of of uh, technology and and execution and manufacturing skills they are having a um, big revival right so because we we, we people honoring it and, and if you buy whatever a cashmere sweater from a brand where you know it has a long lasting quality and you the, the, do the girls math you're, you're gonna have it for 10 years and you deduct divide it by the 10 years of days it's a very cheap product of course if you just uh, have it for a year it's yeah. maybe not right but I think that's applicable on everything also the car industry is very much into it um, and and specific I think those detailing and it's more about um, small small gestures with mm. a big impact which are now seen I mean, I think, for example, your cover of the new identity is a great example from uh, our friend Agatha. It's very nice because for me, this is also has a very minimalistic but very nice elegance in it. And I think that reflects a lot, even if it's a commercial space, mm -hmm. um, it's, um, it, it's very much reflecting also for me the identity of the new face of, of residential because that's pretty much the aesthetic the people are now going for. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I also think the materials are changing. Some the materials like metal, yeah. right? Um, some mesh, um, glazing with mesh in between, for example. These elements before were seen too, uh, let's say, F&B style or too retail, right? Yeah. No, now you see amazing panels all in, in metal, brushed uh, in, in residential uh, projects, luxury as well. So it changes a little bit the concept of the, the most important materials that represent luxury, right? Is how you use it yeah. and how you balance the, that uh, it's, it's more important. I believe also that there is some um, connection with the um, uh, raw materials. I feel that as more natural or more sustainable uh, and, and, and less um, uh, harmful, let's say, to the people, mm -hmm. uh, the best you are living there. So if you know the materials are, are uh, um, expelling some toxics, it's not good. I, I, I think, sorry to interrupt you, I think uh, and that's something um, which is very, um, very reflective also for, for the time spirit. Everything is a bit more about authenticity. Yes. And generity. So, um, so people go again, and I guess that also affects you a lot. Um, so, if people want walnut, um, they want walnut. And now they also understand that it does not all look equal because it's natural. Yeah. So, and I think that's when I remember when I had my first project here in the region that we sometimes had discussions that wood panels did not look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And we had to explain that's natural. Yeah. So, and it's like, uh, you know, it's similar. And that, so and that's I think so and, and also and also marble now or, or 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 all others so people accept more so it's about and I think that's for all also for how people act in their normal life now yeah so authenticity is a key factor and I think that's very 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 important and that's also applicable on interior project but also I think architecture we look at the client because we know the natural material wood, marble, whatever. So they have to understand also which is the process. So mm -hmm. if I have a block of marble, I start from the mountain, I have to cut. So not all the mountain is the, is the same. So the beans is different, you have to accept. We can do some matchbook, we can work on it. Okay. But of course, we have, you have to accept the, the way which the nature works. So you have to accept it, to embrace, no? Yeah. Uh, the wood is, is the same. So it cannot be the same panel exactly the other. Otherwise, you have to choose the, the, the composite wood, mm. yeah. which personally I don't like it, but okay, for external use can be, of course, for the maintenance, for yeah. example. So we have to teach it to, to the client. Only, not only about how they look now, but how they age. I think that's a very important point, and I, I believe that it's also um, from both sides, from the industry and from the client, right? Because they want a uh, natural material, but they want that less long. 
Uh, so the industry needs to still keep as natural as possible, but try to treat in a way that can last long. And the client needs to understand that our wood, it's a, a live material that will breathe, we will expand, we will retract, we will change colors eventually. And this is beautiful, mm -hmm. I think so. But we need to also yeah. educate the client Agreed. regarding the aging of the material, leather chair, right? This yeah. will, um, it's beautiful, the marks of the time, but it's still quality. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that these, these two elements in regarding materials and accept uh, what they are, Definitely. it's important. So it's interesting when you talk about the aging process itself, because residentials there, um, obviously they have like grandeur, luxury, all of those, uh, all of those wonderful things. Do you have clients coming back maybe five, ten years down the line and asking for uh, a revamping of the interiors or is that not really a trend in this region? We did a revamp of a commercial space mm -hmm. where we did the initial or we helped with the initial design and then after a circle we did the relaunch of the new design on it. Um, but uh, I think that's pretty new because also, I mean, I'm just eight and a half years now in the region, you know, like uh, the circle is also not really achieved yet. Um, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, th the issues I see here sometimes is that the quality of execution is just not according standards and it's not aligning, for example, with European standards. And uh, then, you know, like people are sometimes not really getting also what you expect from them to reach this level mm -hmm. and, and I think there comes a lot of problems so I mean I'm uh, I mean we see this all the time right you have um, you live in in, in, in residential project I don't want to say names you live in residential projects uh, or I also in the past and then you have water leakages right I guess everyone knows this uh, yeah. and uh, massive water leakages I always uh, a friend of mine is very esoteric she said like oh when you have water coming in your house money comes and I thought like okay that's maybe a nice idea to survive this thing right <laughs> so I was like this oh, way it's a good one positive. it's a good yeah. branding so yeah, I thought honestly, like okay that, that, that money come okay but you know Absolutely. of course when the ceiling really falls on you you're actually like okay now we'll stop this money thing actually but again and I think there it is because also the weather situation changed here yeah and we, we still the region still builds according how it was maybe 30 years ago where mm. you didn't have rain where you didn't have this massive rainfalls yeah and and now actually they have to build according European standards but we do not even have a, a drainage system in the streets which leads to this overflows I think that also regarding the dynamic of the family changed mm. a little bit I feel that uh, the, the remodeling that you're doing in some residents uh, right now uh, it's more about open up uh, some areas that were before like privacy privacy mm. and I think that uh, the, the, the new families or the new generation in UAE, uh, they are much more social and open and receiving. So you uh, elements like show kitchen that before were not something you know considered because the kitchen was a back of house element. Yeah, you have someone bringing in the food, or, you know, for the big villas. I mean, now it's not like this. You are sharing this experience. So we have this uh, open kitchen and elements. Definitely. So you can socialize more. Yeah, the layouts, are, uh, that's a very interesting point in terms of the layouts specifically itself. But I wanted to touch uh, you know, on one of the points that I think across the board you guys mentioned, which was building standards. Now, obviously with products, um, yes. Stefana, how does it work for products? Do you still adhere to certain standards from the European market or do you have any regional codes that you yeah. look so towards? Yeah, so because we sell the door all around the world. So we have a lot of specification, a lot of standards. Because if we sell in the USA, we have to, uh, for example, our, our door has the certification for the hurricane, because in Miami mm -hmm. they are uh, fire rated or a lot of specification. Uh, and see, the, we produce the door in, in the same way for all, all the country. I mm. think. And uh, what doesn't change? What uh, change in the in these few years is uh, dimension again. So and mm -hmm. the connected system, the technology. There is more more technology. And also the fact that people start to traveling again after COVID. Mm -hmm. So now that the world is uh, speaking about the globalization, so the people travel a lot and see other things around the world, and they 
this, this is why maybe the layout changing so people are more open now to mm. to change also the, the the material and to pay more attention to the quality yeah. as a european standard because uh, i make some example uh, a few years ago in a project which i don't want to mention now uh, they have 60 door for 60 villa and they put the, the simply wooden door as an entrance door, mm -hmm. which with the climate doesn't work so for mm -hmm. a long time, right? Because they don't want to spend this amount of money. Yeah. And I, I try to explain that we have a steel structure, I mean, it's different inside the door, so we can cut it with wood, of course, but at least the steel structure and uh, and also is is eco friendly because you change it 25 years later, not every year, and uh, and they change two times the, the door wood. And in the end, they buy, they convince after four years to change all the 60 door. For example, I tell you this example. So, okay. if you follow this specification of mostly Europe or USA, more Europe, if I can say. I get mixed reactions from designers and product suppliers, which is technology. Now, technology at a standpoint, when you say is, oh, okay, integration of integration of technology is going to be great. It's all great. Is that the case usually with designers? Do you have fans coming back and saying, you know what, I want this sort of technology that I've seen on Pinterest somewhere? Or is it more you guys, you know, sort of saying to the client that, let's have a seat, there's these other things that work, these other things that don't. How is that relationship with technology and clients? Um, I, I, I mean, um, we actually have more clients who say they want to focus more on um, no technology. So um, the thing we have um, in most of our project is, of course, um, a lighting control system. Mm -hmm. So they all work with um, um, DALI-based um, uh, lighting. And in this case, we most of the time work together with, with Lutron. So for, for having the control system to be able to, to um, control different light scenarios and things like this. Um, for all the other automations, I have to say our clients are more hesitant. Mm. And I am not, look, I have nothing against technology, but if someone is hesitant on going away, I do not tend to push them big or convince them mm. because I, first of all, I don't live there and uh, it's not my space. And I personally think if you have to convince someone and then maybe in the end it doesn't work like they're expecting it, it's a very bad position for you and you don't want to be in that. Oh, that's a difficult conversation. You're just See? like, oh, I convinced you of something, but oh, it doesn't work. But is that the same, Akarina, that you're um, Actually, no, my clients are the opposite. They want technology and everything. And then I give my uh, advice. <laughs> and maybe it's too much. And in the end, you're not going to use it uh, at all. And then they understand, yeah. You're right. So I, I try to tone down a little bit mm -hmm. um, in order to to make efficient, right? Because if I have ten scenes in a room, I will not use practically, right? So I just say, okay, let's do a lighting control system, few scenes, key scenes. But another point that uh, they are very into uh, is security. Um, so I, I have my clients say I want to close my doors and open my doors by my phone. phone. Uh, yeah. I, I travel a lot. I need to see everything, the cameras and all. Uh, so these I do not give opinion <laughs> because it's too personal, sensitive. Yeah. What, uh, what you want to lock, what you don't, and what you want to see, what you don't. So it's too personal. Uh, but they are, uh, it's a, a constantly demanding uh, regarding uh, these, especially for the big, the big villas. Um, and uh, AV, right? They want this amazing cinema, sound system. And I think that helps uh, with the, let's say, the experience of the house, uh, especially if you have uh, common areas that you want to mm -hmm. have some gathering. So all this technology, makes the environment. <laughs> I think you touched on a very crucial point, which is security when it comes to especially doorways and you know the integrated technology and the concerns about it. Um, my question would be first, like how advanced is the security protection when it okay. comes to entryways in this region? Okay, we develop an application which is called uh, Arcade, 
which you can manage your your security door. I mean, because all our doors is uh, break resistant three and four. Mm -hmm. Okay, the bank uses five level only to make to make an example, which means you can always open a door. Okay, it's only a matter of time and tools. Yeah. So to be to be clear. Okay. For the technology, we have this uh, application uh, which you can manage your door till 300 users. You can, you can communicate with your home automation mm -hmm. so the client can be choose who enter or not. Uh, uh, if add some card, can be booked by phone, card, fingerprint, code. There is also an option and you can divide it this 300 user, maybe the staff of the house working only with the card and you can control the access which they at what time they enter when they close the door etc also if you're out of the country no one is in the house you can send an otp like a bank mm -hmm. OTP code which working only one time yeah and you can see when your guests go in and go out so you can have a lot of options in the end <clears throat> this amazing technology uh, is only a few a few items that they use it not all because a few clients are really into the to use all these kind of uh, features which yeah. the application have. So normally they use only two or three. They, they register the fingerprint, they change the code, and this is basically. That's but they right. want the full scenario, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but no one play 100% on the because in the reality they they don't need it. Definitely. So a lot more people are asking for the key under the mat situation. They are like, just give us the key, we'll keep it the under the mat. The key is always Somebody good. Yeah, the key is yeah. always good because if something happens, <laughs> you know, the key yes. is the last option. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You need to have the plan B. I know. I mean, imagine you're like drenching and it's raining somewhere and then your phone is dead. Everything is you're just <laughs> locked out looking at your yeah, house. The, the worst scenario is, uh, I, I don't know, they were cutting the... the, the the energy because in the street yes. uh, yeah. they do something yeah. the know. battery of the door which is just maybe is too low because yeah. they advise you in the application several times but we are all lazy tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow 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 the phone is down oh no so no. and you have a, a, a break resistant three door yeah. to get in so, <laughs> you're not, you're so not getting in. you need 35 minutes with a drill and some yeah. tools and destroy a half of the door too <laughs> technology of um, a perfectly manufactured door and it more, has more to do with the access control. Um, same like for security and cameras, uh, but it does not stop you from uh, providing a, a, a lovely provided, I don't know, polished plaster floor or um, a nice wooden paneling uh, in massive wood. So I think it's not, they don't exclude, they're more including it. And of course, if you have the perfect client who understands the benefits of technology and also has an eye for um, manufacturing and, and quality products, then it's uh, um, the lovely client. You should never share his name and <laughs> never post anything about him. Keep him safe and hide him because otherwise everyone else would like to have him. So that's, uh, why, that's why you send me a lot of NDA projects. Now yes, I understand. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> now I get it. You know, you have to hide them. They're very, 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 very valuable people. So, so the perfect life. You understand this, right? Yeah. What I'm talking about. Yeah. We are somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Exactly. Somewhere. So we somewhere. Don't show all the anchors. Side door. Yeah, exactly. Keep them yeah. in a cupboard. Yes, <laughs> Keep them you know, you have to hide them. It's like a nice little, you know, you feel a bit like you're the golem. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm precious. I'm precious. <laughs> so in terms of, um, that's really interesting when you say that the client. I really yeah. want to know who this client is. Like, who is this, uh, the yeah, perfect you, client? You have them, they exist. And uh, that's yes, why you do, yeah. why no? It's, I think it's the one you get, or two or three you get when you do your, your daily um, um, uh, kind of meditation, karma yeah. and meditation yeah. and practicing your gratitude to your life and you pray for the good one. <laughs> And then they are there. Out of a sudden, they you are manifested. The yes, That's yes, yes. It's and really I good. strongly believe, well, you should never share the names and not the location. <laughs> <laughs> Be very, you know, very mystical about it. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it is a golden relationship. It really is. It is. Yes. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> sorry, you were saying. Good. No, I just. <laughs> she feels me. <laughs> I feel because we need to. We need to. <clears throat>
all, not children. When we, we have uh, all the type of clients, so we need to um, and we all crazy this, for the best. And we're all in this shark basset, you know, it's like you drop the bit of blood and everyone is there. <laughs> Wait a second, is, should this be the tagline of this video? <laughs> it's, it's a shark tag, that's what it is. <laughs> it's okay. Don't I share know. your client names. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I'm nothing it is the, su the supply chain in general, but sometimes they know the project yeah. already before even me. It's, you are awarded in the... Am I? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> they know before yeah, me yeah, and they're yeah. li literally yeah. calling me uh, and, and this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes clients, they have the mindset for it, but they might not have the budget. You know, oh, and yes. it's not just, I mean, you cannot judge them because some of the clients are very young right. also. Like, yeah. you know, here in the region, right. people will build houses or homes, they're very young. I mean, yeah. it's not its not like in Europe, right? So uh, the average right. person in Europe is maybe mid-30 or mid-40 <coughs> when they build a house. Here, they are sometimes beginning of 20s. Yeah. And um, it also applies for um, um, the entrepreneurs who are building commercial units. They're very, very young clients. If they don't have... Uh high, uh, let's say, budget for everything. They focus in few pieces mm -hmm. and other pieces. They are pretty much in the local industry as well. So my clients are like, oh, you know that uh, girl that opened a tiny store but is doing her own bespoke table. So they they are uh, valuing as well the, mm -hmm. the, the local market. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, yeah, that's growing. Uh, right now with these um, unique pieces mm -hmm. and uh, of course it's not certified and tested and but it are tiny little things that make authentic mm -hmm. uh, authentic yes <laughs> <laughs> to the, yes. To, the um, to the project to the house and they they feel um, belong right mm -hmm. and so it's very important regarding the arts uh, crafts and 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 this side of uh, let's say materials what I feel I feel that my clients they are uh, like you said traveled they live abroad so they come with this vision but when it becomes uh, to to the art and or to the artistic manual elements they are learning as well with us mm. so they are super excited to see this new innovative uh, it's innovation for me is not only technology right innovation mm -hmm. right. also is Material in the right. art exactly yes. transform something that was used only for i don't know walls that now i can use for you know upholstery so it, it uses the, the, the original existing materials in the market let's say but treated in a different way um so when we we bring these um, arts and crafts and innovative way of using material doing something more artistic the clients are super excited uh, uh, to know more about it to have it you know so I think it's a balance between what is out there in the market what they already see and what they will have only for for themselves like this yeah. to be sustainable now costs a lot as well I mean the sources the energy yeah. investment on on how the products are being produced and all of this so also the price increase we know that we are, it's important mm -hmm. to have because we need to continue in this world is the only way yeah. uh, if us be conscious about it and smart and how we use uh, the materials and create a cycle right but um, in the other hand increases the the production uh, price uh, yet I'm, I'm hoping that one day this curve will start going down, but it's an important point to touch as well quality, but also the sustainable part of it. Is that a little bit maybe more return on investment when you produce? I know you mentioned maybe sustainable products are a bit more expensive, but does it help you in maybe marketing the product a little bit better? Does it have a little bit more return on investment maybe then? <laughs> I th yeah, I mean, first of all, I think it's to be defined what's a sustainable product. Mm. Because some maybe say they're sustainable, we had this discussion before, but they're actually not. Um, so making a, a sustainable product is, is actually already based on how it's produced. Because most of the Italian factories now work with full um, um, natural energies yeah. and that's already a big factor and it's not even in the part of the product but it's a part of the production process 
Um, when we talk about recycled products, we have to be very careful mm. because just because I recycle PET bottles, um, I maybe um, broke the cycle once. But the end product of a PET bottle when it's recycled is a highly toxic product, which is not be able to upcycle again for the next 400 years, mm -hmm. um, except I burn it. So unless something people get uh, certifications for bringing whatever the Blue Angel or Green Star or however they're going to be called, but actually it's a highly toxic product. I then select and I'm like, oh, it's green and it's sustainable. It's actually not really because if I see the the next steps and what's coming from there, it's not. Mm -hmm. So and and I mean that's always a bit like seeing it under different perspectives. I think what we have to see is more about. Um, an under, a really very cautious um, selection and implementation of products mm -hmm. in projects and unfortunately what I see often also in relation to clients because we just took over a project where unfortunately the assigned design team and fit out company was not competent enough and promised a lot. Um, there are a lot of people and they're not qualified enough and because there is no certification maybe about this. Mm. So I can say still in this country I'm a designer but I'm actually not. And um, it's not protected like in Europe. Like being an interior architect, you have to have all your certifications. You have to be even a member of the chamber. Here, I don't need to. Mm. Just because I say I'm now um, a designer, um, it doesn't mean that I have the technical knowledge of how to implement and how to apply things correctly. And that leads to a lot of things like, like even building in yeah. wrong materials, building them in wrongly, mm -hmm. um, harming more than, than actually having a benefit for it. And of course then also the, 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 the circle of um, the product is, is by far shorter. Because if I'm not building it in properly, um, the product will break, will get damaged, exactly. and, and, and it doesn't last as long as before or actually initially planned. And that's a problem. So we're we certifying a lamps, lights, tiles, and whatever, but we do not really certify people, right? So when you talk about materiality yes. and when you talk about like what's available in the market, yes. you rightfully mentioned the pressures that new architects or designers yes. <clears throat> essentially face. Yes. Now, from Experienced yes. architects and designers such as yourselves, are there programs that you uh, are implementing to sort of help the newer generation understand the various uh, intricacies of this market or is it more an on-job training thing that they need to get used to? Okay, so there are some platforms that helps you. Um, few websites that you can filter products by certifications, for example, right? So they help us to uh, shortlist a few brands that you can trust because you know that the, they are already sourcing from responsible uh, places, that they are producing in a responsible way. So um, there is some kind of education with the team uh, and how to shortlist materials in general for your um, approach ideal. And there are some websites that we use too. Uh, to do it, but it's not only, it's one of the tools, right? Mm -hmm. I think that experience we cannot replace with technology, never. Um, understand how the materials can be used, perform in time as well, only comes when you're using it and testing, testing almost, right? But for my young team that are overwhelmed and lost, yeah. Uh, because this is this is a reality. I always I try to guide them to the brands, trust in the brands, right? Because um, if you had a red experience with different uh, sources, it's easier to get it right. Okay, so um, of course they need to investigate anyway, yes. and uh, analyze budget, time. Uh, lead time, everything that <laughs> comes with uh, selecting a material. But I think that if we if we can uh, uh, have this uh, social as well uh, contact with the brands is very important to the educational process of the team. Um, definitely. And is it the same for the product side as well? Do you have some sort of program or training that goes? No, we have internally because. <laughs> In a way, we are scared to, to create. We have already tried to have a, a program for the architects to 
display, you know, to make render maybe, to change the material, to the library, etc. The handle, but we produce a customized product. Mm -hmm. So if the actor design a special handle, we have to do it. Yeah. Or we try to do it. We, we try to make uh, the architect or the designer uh, happy. Okay. And uh, there is some limitation in technical. They have to accept some limitation, which is very few. So we customize 98% of the door. Okay. Mm -hmm. In terms of material, in terms of cladding, handle, mm -hmm. lock. I mean, there's only a few thing, things we cannot change. Okay. Because it becomes an engineering problem. So mm -hmm. we cannot. Uh, so no, we don't have a specific program for architect, and uh, because uh, every time is a different door, we do seven thousand per year, all different in terms of size, clamping, lock, I mean, and uh, so we cannot create. A... But this is beautiful because it's still. Um, and we need time to come back to the pressure. We yeah. have a lot of pressure because <laughs> we are always late because the people want the door in one month, which is not possible. It's three months time production plus shipment. Now the shipment. It's a problem. Yes. Uh, do the situation in the seat, so it takes 15 days more. Mm. And become more expensive, not only for the timing, because also if we want longer. to ship by car yeah. or by mm. air, sorry, it's, it's more expensive, of course. But there is a queue now also to get by air. Because but a lot of people choose. Yeah. choose. And you cannot ship all by air because your yeah. products are longer. <clears throat> no, we can uh, ship by air till six, seven meters with a cargo yeah. because it's like a car. You, know, it, you have yeah. to imagine a crane, a box crane. Which the dimension is and the weight because of some of our goals yeah, is one ton right. weight. Yes. So uh, we have to use a special cargo which is available only Friday. Uh, so there's a lot of yes. uh, stuff behind, <laughs> uh, which so, is the client that doesn't understand. You know? No, I know, I know. So, but it's beautiful that your product you can customize it all at the time. It's it's a fact, right? Yeah. But it's still you're delivering an industrial, let's say, level quality of product. Uh, but it still has the artisan, let's say, yes. side of it, yes. because it's bespoke for exactly. for you, for your client. So this is beautiful. This uh, two things. <laughs> yeah. I, I think a good example is actually that people are willing to wait over a year for a watch, and mm -hmm. um, even maybe two years for a handbag, but they're not willing to wait six weeks for a door. Exactly. So and yes. um, that's what I always. I think 12, it's um, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, very accurate, and it's unfortunately a, a comparison we sometimes use with clients because mm. they all wait for watches and they all wait for bags, and it's very mm -hmm. easy to understand that obviously this is a product you're going to use the next I don't know 15 years or 20 years in your home, yeah. and um, then there is no need to rush it because it needs to be even more precise than um, exactly. what you wear in your hand. Definitely. So like, uh, but that's very important, and and I think there's a lack sometimes. Sometimes it's um, in this case, even if you're very educated and you know the names of brands, but there is not this transparency of um, steps and production sometimes. Yeah. And I think that's True. where the lack comes from, where people do not understand that things need time. And even if you say, okay, from placing an order, it takes four to six weeks, but the placing the order doesn't mean that now everyone just in Italy just waited for it, exactly. was sleeping on the what, table, yeah. then they wake up and they're yeah. like, hey, yeah, now we're jumping on this order. No, there is a production forecast. Yeah. yeah. And this production forecast exactly. leads to aligning you in a line, which then goes into production and then it takes this time. Yeah. And uh, that's always a, a topic we have to explain a lot of times. And it's, it's sometimes very challenging because you're saying over and over the same things. <laughs> And then yeah. um, people are, whatever, blaming us because they are late or <laughs> they take longer. Yeah. But yeah. it's because it's a common, it's a common thing in the 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 world. Yeah. Uh, Everybody is anxious, right? We cannot watch a more than thirty seconds video. Nobody. Yeah. So it it becomes uh, spreading across all industries. So yes, it's difficult to educate the client we, about the time needed to produce. Sometimes we, we lost some clients uh, about timing because they push us to do it in one month, one month and a half. I say, no, I can refuse because I know it. Or I lie, yeah. if you want, I can tell you a lie now. Mm. I can produce in one month and a half, but after that you have to wait three months. So yeah, it has to if be. you don't put a penalty, okay. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. I mean, if you want the truth, they need time and you have to accept it. Definitely. Like you wait two years for Rolex or other brand, you know? Yeah. I didn't so. say the names. Nah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's or how, that's or how other brands. Or any other. Yeah, no, 
<laughs> any any luxury watch. Let's put it this way. Yes. For cars, you also have to wait for cars. Oh, and yes. And then it's acceptable. Exactly. So, exactly. and that's exactly. And I think it's a very good example. And also, uh, can I yeah. can I sure, add something? Yeah, sure. Please. Uh, because this is always the fighting which I have with client fighting discussion. Uh, so if you buy a, if you order a car mm. in general and you wait three four months, okay, if you're lucky. But the car the car dealer can resell the car. I cannot because it was the door for you. Two meter point ninety one and a half. By <laughs> with your personal clamping, with your personal handle, yeah. I cannot resell. Yeah. So you have to understand the customization. It's like the brand of the car. I don't want to say name. <laughs> uh, made the car for you. Yeah. Well, with your leather with your engine, with your brake, I mean, mm. extremely, they cannot resell. So this is also a fact. You have to accept we do something for you. And also when you place the order, and okay, you already pay, uh, and every detail has to be done. Yeah. After that, we can start the production. Because you can, there is a, is an industry, okay? Mm. Uh, so the people cannot wait your decision about the color. Yeah. You have to buy the page. So there's a lot of process behind. So we have to be ready in all the details and all the material which we need to produce the order. Definitely. So when they place an order, it takes three months for a lot of reasons. Because exactly. we have, maybe we have to search your marble. Because maybe some clients want to match the same marble on the floor, in the same uh, mountain, in the same block, which yeah. sometimes is not so easy to get it, in the same factory. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that's, I have so many more follow-up questions to that, but unfortunately we are winding up. So I'm going to quickly ask one thing that I've asked almost all our panelists because it's really interesting to hear from different people what they think. Um, so I'm going to start off with you, Vera, about what you think is going to be one of the biggest challenge for this industry in the upcoming year. We are only in the second month, so I think we are safe to say upcoming year. And then the one, one big pro that you see or one great change that you think will happen as well big challenge in this industry here in the region mm -hmm. um, I, I think I mean I, I actually I think the industry is every day a challenge so and it's something when you decided to be an architect or an interior designer you took on the challenge it's like you're a Formula One driver you go into the car you know it's a race mm -hmm. so and that's how it is and um, I just hope that um, the designers and specifically the design studios are not being overrun by all these fit out companies who are now incorporating design mm -hmm. because I think it's a, I see a lot of lack of quality mm -hmm. in this and uh, um, again because I look this, being a designer and being well educated and, and worked over years for different studios it's a lot of um, um, sweat and blood you put into this mm. and I do doubt strongly um, to that you can be replaced by someone who's just opening a drawer and multiplying kind of Pinterest uh, image um, to, to create something because I, that's what I see. That's my the biggest challenge I, I have mm -hmm. for, for not just this year, I think it's in general. So I think this kind of fast copying is, is, is not good for the industry. And of course, in this case, it's very nice that magazines like yours are existing because you show that there's a very creative side on, um, on of designers and architects, which are actually working against this trend. Mm -hmm. So that, that's one where I think it's that's a challenge. And what the second question was? The change that you hope for and are you uh, seeing that it's going to happen in 2024? Positive side. I'm always positive. <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an architect. If I would not be positive, I would then stop working and sit on the beach and have my pockets that's, that's in, in the handsomeness. Yeah. So I think that's, that's like, you know, you always <laughs> hope for more and even more and more nicer clients mm. and there will be mm. another one coming around where you think like wow that's worth going with them and it's nice to meet them and it's nice to discuss with them their project yeah. and they have a vision of, of things and no matter if it's a private villa or a commercial or a restaurant or whatever it is I think everyone who has um, is passionate about his idea mm. and wants to make it reality with you is super positive so that's it okay. and um, I think that's very nice and I hope that we are able to, to see more um, very visionary and very cool projects in this region that's I, I, I hope so that's something I would appreciate perfect absolutely <laughs> great Karina one thing mm. that you think is a massive challenge and the other one 
the positive change that you see for 2024? I think that the well-being, we need to keep in mind our health, you know, sometimes we are in this crazy environment, uh, working hours, um, running around, and uh, these spaces are maybe beautiful, but they are not healthy for you in general. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we have this responsibility as designers of um, taking this in consideration everything that we do. Um, if it's a residence, you know, it, creating the environment for this person really enjoy the family and share or your own time off. Uh, or if this is a restaurant or cafe, um, provides the space that these people can perform uh, many uh, uh, activities in this cafe, maybe a work, uh, and you know, and, and feel uh, comfortable uh, in many ways, uh, ergonomics and so on. So I feel that this is still a challenge. Um, combine the, the spaces to, to, to fit for all purposes in, in, in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a, it started, but I, I feel that there are a lot of room uh, to be developed. And positive, um, I think that uh, our industry in the region is being uh, listened. I think the clients value our opinion and uh, I, I'm not here too long, it's five years now but I could see a movement uh, already uh, to be more open to, to your ideas and trust. Uh, I, I think that this is going well and I'm <laughs> Amazing. And it's a great time where you come in. The last five years has been interesting, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, Stefano, the last. Yeah, for our products is to improve the product, which is mm. really good, but of course, start to study something new as, as a challenge of course to improve the service because when you have a good product you need a good service mm -hmm. Other, otherwise a product so and this is why we install our self door so we don't allow anyone to we cannot sell without the installation mm. I mean we tried several years ago but that doesn't work yeah. and uh, so improve the, the service this mm -hmm. is the, the most important things and uh, improve the product which is a uh, good already maybe with some new, new material there's mm -hmm. something in mind which i cannot spoil you now and so this is our challenge and big dimension this is another challenge for uh, the door i mean definitely yeah this is a that's a big thing yeah <laughs> thank you so much with that we have come to the end of the discussion absolutely enjoyed uh, the conversation and i'm sure there was because this is recorded, a lot of things could not be followed up, but <laughs> I would love to do this in a more uh, liberal setting, let's say, <laughs> and continue the off-topic conversations. But thank you so much for all of you for being here with us. Thank you very much.